Hey yo, it's Saturday. I know I said I wasn't going to record, but like many others in this space, I am much entertained and even enjoy looking at officially reported statistics and new numbers and guides about where my future is headed and all others. And seeing as how I'm practically in acceptance phase more often than not, I have a great balance now of nature in my system. I can go and walk to a multitude of parks. These things helped quell climate anxiety, is nature, community, friends, online forums, since everyone's busy trying to make bread and coronavirus. So I got a great little prescription going. I'm not on antidepressants or anti-anxiety. I do think that marijuana can be medicinal because it is in the States. So all that being said, I woke up with this CNN meteorologist explaining how the climate threatens global, global security. And this has been mentioned a lot in the government and press the, over the past week. And this is a nice little two minute, two minutes plus one minute clip. If I could spare your time, I'm just going to play him talk about it. These are the low end projections. Remember, we're hitting 1.5 by 2026, 2028, and then we'll be fast into two degrees after that. So yeah, and three fourths of Republicans don't even agree that this is an emergency. But let's see what their own government is telling them. This is how broken we are. Okay, I'm just going to play this and we can watch it together. Some of those climate disasters uh, and what could happen really if there's no action. We want to bring in our meteorologist Derek Van Dam. You know, in those countries highlighted and beyond, is there any doubt yeah. that we're already seeing the effects of climate change? Well, that's just it. That's the reason they identified those 11 particular countries, because they are already experiencing some of the most extreme impacts from climate change, such as hurricanes, typhoons, and droughts. And uh, they have this acute vulnerability that they had to highlight within these four particular reports. By the way, Paula, this is the first time that the U.S. government is officially recognizing the link between climate change and migration as well. In fact, they're citing a source that says 3% of the world's population by 2050 will actually move from its country of origin. That's about... These are low ball estimates. Low ball. Taking place in some sort of climate-driven migration what event pattern. One more time. Now, now we know what did he say one more time? We see it with the move from its country of origin. That's about... 143 million people taking place in some sort of climate-driven migration event pattern. Now, we know we have a warming world. We see it with the increase in sea levels. We see that with the rise in our global temperatures, the melting of glaciers. Climate change is accelerating these particular events, and it's becoming more and more rapid as the years uh, go on. Extreme weather events are becoming more common. Take this summer, for example, the number of extreme rainfall events across the planet were numerous, from Tennessee breaking, shattering their uh, daily record rainfall total. We think of the uh, flash flooding that took place in Germany, France, and portions of eastern China. The ocean, as the world warms, continues to absorb this heat, and that equates to stronger, more frequent, intense tropical cyclones across the planet. Uh, we're expecting an increase in Category 4 and Category 5 equivalent hurricanes and typhoons across the planet as our world continues to warm. Of course, uh, temperatures on the increase, that will continue. In fact, the likelihood of heat waves and the frequency and duration of these heat waves will increase as time progresses, as our, warm, our planet warms. This uh, increases the area burned with wildfires. It also increases our sea level rise. He said a 40% increase in area burned by wildfires. You think the wildfires are bad now? They haven't seen nothing yet. Okay, I'll shut up. Thanks to uh, the Arctic sea ice that continues to melt, it puts coastal Vulner, uh, coastal populations very, very vulnerable. Uh, you can see some of the five most vulnerable countries across the country. We think of Bangladesh, Paula. Uh, that particular country only averages nine meters above sea level, so a very vulnerable location for coastal sea level rise. Back yeah, to hard to not to worry about what's ahead for them. Derek Van Dam, appreciate it. Yo, that was a super, super fast run through of everything. I mean, all the areas and, you know, it's not even certain what this report, how much of this report 
is actually including all of it, like the feedback loops perpetuating temperature rise and I mean look it's really easy to get overwhelmed about this and just like be full of anxiety but you 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 got to let the feelings run let the feelings run through you of what's going to happen you're going to see some crazy shit in your life in all my pain and sickness what music it was that like cracked and boomed like crazy crazy Go watch documentaries of like prior world wars. Go get history buffed about ancient times and, you know, just expand your knowledge and then put it into practice and understand what's happening coming up. Like I said, acceptance comes. I just thought it was a really great graphic of everything that's happening. Other thing, this is pretty basic. I'm just going to run through it. This is on your health. health. A new report from the Lancet Medical Journal says current climate trends are a code red for future health. Well, let's bring in CNN meteorologist Derek Van Dam. Derek. Same deal. Yeah, you know, John, this, uh, this publication from Lancet is published annually, and it tracks these health impacts of climate change. Now, we've only got 10 days until that crucial start of COP26 when world leaders join in Glasgow. So they're being reminded right now with publications just like this of the crucial moments that we find ourselves in. Crucial so the moments. publication by Lancet uh, highlighted a couple of things, specifically what takes place during climate change. We know that with a warming, rapidly warming planet, we're shifting our Look. rainfall patterns across the earth. Uh, we're seeing the droughts will hurt food production. production longer wildfire seasons of course the hazards that uh, that demonstrates too are floods and droughts when it impacts uh, food production as john just mentioned as well but that extreme heat has the potential to allow for uh, longer wildfire seasons and that means more smoke in the air uh, the potential for more smoke in the air impacting people's upper respiratory problems but also that translates uh, to the potential for uh, increases in the number of months where diseases are transferable, for, intra, uh, for instance, and encourages the spread of infectious diseases as well. So this has a health impact on us, a, a real direct impact, uh, not only from heat stress, but the insect-borne diseases like malaria uh, and dengue fever as well. Uh, take a look at some of these examples. We had uh, the incredible flooding that took place in Tennessee, also on the other side of the world in Germany and France last summer. Uh, where we had extreme rainfall. We can't talk about uh, climate change without mentioning what took place over the Pacific Northwest. And Canada, all-time so record heat taking you place across this region. Never warm climate impacts health. Degrees, of course, that you get it, to, uh, right? An increase in wildfires, which has an impact on people's upper respiratory problems. Deer ticks, that, illness, you know, all that shit. This is spreading when we have warming temperatures that allows for that to take place uh, across the planet. And so uh, we are going to uh, study this, uh, Lancet. Uh, very close Days between billion dollar disasters. Right Look at that. Now, Look at that. We are being reminded at why this is so important leading up to COP26. John. Absolutely. Jake, thank you, Jake. A billion dollar disaster that. every day, yo. Okay, so that really that's it. You know, just climate anxiety, dealing with it. You know, I don't have any kids. I'm so blessed in a in a developing in a first world country. You know, I have so much luxury and privilege. I'm reminded of that daily. I get it. I'm gonna be the one of the last to be affected. But I'm a humanitarian. Okie doke. Now you get it. Go about your merry little day. I appreciate you. Talk to you later.